The Sugar Bowl. Let's close out with that one. Baylor wins uh, 21-7 to over Ole Miss. And you want to talk about frustrating for a game to... Like, you're, you're psyched about it because, all right, we just got the Rose Bowl and it was 48-45, last second, all this kind of mess. And you've got Lane Kiffin and Matt Corral comes out and then nobody scores and Matt Corral gets hurt early. And it was, I mean, the, the game was fun for, I guess, defensive-minded people, I guess. But, I mean, it was kind of a dud. It was just, it, Baylor was not great. Like, Jerry Bohannon still had an injury. But they he passed for what forty yards I believe it was yeah, I don't have it less than, I know it was fifty yards less than fifty yards yeah Bohannon seven of seventeen for forty yards one touchdown and one and if they pick. kept stats right if they kept stats right and they took his sacks away I mean he he might be less than twenty yards it, let's see sacks well no Ole Miss didn't have any sacks so oh, they didn't have any sacks <laughs> had zero Baylor had ten sacks in this ball game okay um, I know he got tackled by the line of scrimmage a couple times but I guess those are all draws. They just assumed they were run plays, or they were out of the pocket. Where yeah, they? they they were they were all. They call them off because I um, know that he got tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Let's see, Jerry Bohannon, seven rushing attempts for twenty three yards. So, yeah, you know, tackle for loss. Ole Miss had one for negative one yards. No, it might have been that, that far. So that that thing that was the biggest thing. Ole Miss could not get a push on him. Abram Smith was awesome, like he has been all season. Twenty five carries, one hundred seventy two yards. He was the offense. Stud. Basically all night. Monera Baldwin, the uh, the one uh, rushing touchdown for 48 yards there. They Look, Luke Altmyer, I think, is going to be pretty good eventually. Yeah. I don't think he was ready for this ball game. Well, like, no. It did not no. look at all like he was ready to go against well, that. Hang on now. Whoa, whoa. I don't know about that. I think he played well. He did play pretty well. I think well. this is yeah. a really good defense, by oh, the way. Oh, it absolutely. Uh, uh, Kiffin said afterwards, he said, Dave Aranda outcoached me, but he's done that to a lot of people. So, yep. no, I so I, I told several people I think this is going to be a low scoring game because they were all over, 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 over for this game. I was like, you need to be real careful. First off, Baylor struggles to score the football. Secondly, I think Dave Aranda is the best defensive mind in football right now. I yeah, just in yeah. college football, I do. You give him a month to prepare, and and I know that I know that it's. Impossible to say what the game would have looked like had Corral not gone down. But I'm I'm just telling you, I don't think it would have been a whole lot different. I think I think Altman made some big plays. I think, you know, he threw a pretty deep ball and guys were getting open, and that's fine. But everything was a struggle. Everything is a fight. Those those DBs and those linebackers play so disciplined and they play so just perfect football. They're not talent wise better than anybody out there. Ole Miss talent wise out talents out talents Baylor, and I don't think it's close offense to defense. Yeah. I just think those I just think those those guys are just coached perfectly. They're just coached perfectly. Got a lot of upperclassmen, but I will tell you this: there are a lot of them that will be back next year. Yep. They uh, now they will miss Terrell Bernard. Senior linebacker, he had 17 tackles in this game. <laughs> just, he had but somebody two sacks. else will take that role. Like, somebody else will step it up. Oh, yeah. That's what, uh, Rand is going to do that. <laughs> I mean, it was such a weird it, – it was it was such a different kind of uh, heart racing game, right, where, like, it, every play matters, but it's not just racing up and down the field the way it was with Ohio State and Utah. This was like, okay, if anybody breaks a play open – that could be the one that wins this thing, and that's exactly what happened. With but, but that's and that's what I, and but that's what I told everybody though. I had a couple of guys in the text. I had a couple of Mississippi State fans that really hate Ole Miss, and they're like, "Come on, man, Ole Miss can't win this game when it was seven seven. And I said, "Just don't." I'm mean, telling you, just hang tight, hang yes. tight with me. A Ole Miss ain't gonna be able to drive on this team. Their their only opportunity to score is to 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 bust a play. Okay, I just don't think that's happening a lot. All right, and eventually the dam will break. And Ole Miss held up a lot longer than I even thought they would. But come oh, yeah. to the fourth quarter, the dam broke. They got two touchdowns, and, and, and it was it. Yeah. No, the uh, Really, they three, just needed the one. Three interceptions for Ole Miss, uh, one on the opening drive, and yep. and it led to no points because Baylor couldn't do anything with it. Like No, no, the, no. The first op- the touchdown uh, interception was the touchdown. The 
The second that kid tipped the football, the second that ball got tipped, I sent a text to all no, you no, guys. No, I'm saying, he, remember, he gone. no, Matt. No, no, no. I know what you're talking about, but uh, but Corral threw about, one like early, like yes, and yeah. that was the touchdown. No, the first interception Corral threw, I thought was the one that went to the house. No, no, that was in the second quarter. That was the first okay. uh, Altmeyer interception. Oh, Corral so, was out by then. Yeah, yeah, Corral was already out at that point. Uh, I just remember when that guy tipped the football. As soon as the ball got tipped. Tipped. I said, <laughs> this kid catches his ball. It's, it's, he's gone. Yeah. Because he's the fastest dude on the field, and it's not close. And then nobody else is close to him. That's Ole Miss wide receivers out there. Don't oh, matter. Yeah. Don't matter. I've watched too much Baylor football. That Nobody's catching that dude. Now you're nobody. 100% right. Uh, best season in Baylor history? Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, they got 12 wins. Yeah. And, and won you a Super a better Bowl. season? They've, hey, I, never, they've never won 12 games. They've never won a Super Bowl. Right? Had a, you know. had a Baylor fan send me some information. So the last time Baylor won the Sugar Bowl, they had what I think uh, the New York Times and the Washington Post and whatever called the happiest year of all time, and it was 1957. So they won the Sugar Bowl January 1st, 1957. They didn't play in it again until January 1st of 2020. And they lost it to Georgia. And then, of course, they lose Matt Rule. And it, we get COVID. And we get all this other stuff. That, like, it, the last, from 2020 through 2021, was not exactly the best of times. But now. No, they won two games last year. But now I'm not just talking about Baylor. I'm just talking about period. For the country. Like, uh-huh. now I'm saying Baylor won the Sugar Bowl in Jan- or on January 1st, 2022. Is it a sign of things to come for the world, now Let's that Baylor so. has won a Sugar Bowl again. <laughs> Let's hope so. Here's hoping. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.